So, Amanda, you're an ichthyologist. I what, am. What is that? Um, well, <laughs> colloquially a fish nerd. Okay. All right. <laughs> but somebody um, who studies fishes. Good pub <laughs> trivia question too. What ology is ichthyology? I knew that. I just yeah. wanted people at uh, home to know. All right. So you must be excited about the shark exhibit. I'm very excited. It's not often we get to show off our fabulous wares and some of the sharks that we're displaying have never been shown to the public before. I just want to show people it's just not about the big bitey things. It's about all these amazing yeah. shapes and sizes and habitats and yeah. So, so much the big stuff. biting things, they're going to get people in yeah. and then you're going to sneak some science That's in. That's right. I'm going to sneak the really cool stuff in. But there are more than just sharks for Amanda to curate. These rolling stacks are built on almost 200 years worth of scientific labour in the form of millions of fish specimens and are all part of the Australian Museum's Research Institute. So where are we here? Here we are in the type collection, the ichthyology type collection, and this is the absolute duck's nuts of any museum collection. Yeah. When a new species is described, it must be lodged in a museum. So they are scientifically the most valuable things we have. Right, so are they a bit like the standard kilo that was kept in Paris, so you measure, or the standard yeah. one metre? Is it like that's how you...? Absolutely. So when you describe a new species, you have to reference those that are most similar to it in order to say they're actually different and what I have is new. And it is the absolute reference collection for all of um, the planet's biodiversity, really. Describing species new to science helps us understand the natural world because it creates a research-based catalogue of all living things. And its volumes are constantly growing. We've got probably about 700,000 adult fishes and a few million larvae. And how many would you collect a year? Like, because they keep coming in. This is not a static collection. Absolutely. So on average, there's one new species of fish described as new to Australia every week. Every week? Yes. And most of those new species that are described are actually found within our collections. And there's a broad range. Everything from the weirdly wonderful. We have the Mr Blobby, yeah. famous internet fish. He looks quite different to what he does in his picture. Yeah, he's used a lot on the internet to describe a mood. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> to peculiar evolutionary quirks. This fabulous fish, this lovely lady, is a deep sea anglerfish. This is the female and this is the male who's parasitised her and that's how they reproduce. So the male is a parasite? Yes. Right, OK. And that's where he stays for the rest of his life. Uh, are you having a go at me? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the sheer size of this unusual menagerie makes it difficult for Amanda to select just 11 specimens for the shark show. Would you like to touch the great one? I'm not touching you'll any of this you'll stuff. You'll never get another no, opportunity. No. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> to what, touch what a, a sell. white shark. You'll notice that <laughs> you I... You love it. You'd climb in there with it. <laughs> I would. <laughs> the great white is staying in that bin. Instead, Amanda has chosen a rare and biologically significant species for the show. <laughs> the goblin shark. It spends most of its life in darkness as far down as 1.3 kilometres. This specimen here was collected in about 1987 right. from off the south coast of New South Wales. And one of the cool things about the goblin shark is you can see this really long snout. And the reason we think that it's so big is because it has this extra sense. All the sharks have this extra sense called ampullae of Lorenzini. So those electroreceptors pick up movement of other animals. And so what they do is they'll swim along the bottom, they'll um, sense something moving, and then they'll throw their jaws out of their mouth to grab the prey. Right. And they do it very quickly. It's been called slingshot feeding because the shark can catapult its whole mouth forward at about eight metres per second. 
All right, so this is the grown-up goblin shark, but in the exhibition we're going to see something a bit more polite, like a, a little one. Yes, a okay. juvenile. Yeah. So it doesn't frighten the kids. <laughs>